Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked and today we are doing part two of the 5D Mark II walkthrough. We'll be going over the menu systems. As well, we'll be going over the custom, uh, custom preset functions up here at the top. So if you notice, you have some custom preset functions right here. You have C1, C2, and C3. Now you can customly set them up that every time you can preset your ISO, aperture and shutter uh, you can actually preset everything even your white balance you can preset everything ahead of time and then when you pop over to this specific custom button right here it will give you all that information so let's just let's throw it into manual here and uh, let's change up a few things so we'll turn this on here so let's put our ISO at uh, Let's put our ISO at 3200. You just you move this wheel right here to do your, your aperture. We'll move our aperture to 4.5 and we'll do our shutter. And this is your shutter. This is what you do with the shutter. And we'll bring our shutter down to, let's say, 40. Okay, so once you've got that set up the way you want to, you're going to hit menu. And uh, from the top of the menu, you're just going to scroll over using your dial up here at the top. And you're going to scroll over to the third wrench and you're going to go to camera user settings and we're going to go into them and we're going to register those settings. Um, we're going to register it on C1, that's the settings I want. Register camera, OK. So as you can see we are in the manual mode at the moment. So if we bring it up to C1, now it's 3200, 5.6 and 40 shutter. And you can do that with each one of these functions right here. So, uh, so what you do is, is you put it in manual mode, or you can put it in any of these functions. You can preset it, so we could do preset again. We want to go to 30. We want to bring the f-stop up to 9. And we want to bring the ISO up to, let's say, 5,000. Then once we've got that set, we just go down here. We go to menu. We go to the third wrench here. We go to camera user settings, we go to register, we go to dial, C1, we go to OK, and now every time it will always stay at 2510 and 5000, so we'll move here and 2510 and 5000. So these are all preset custom. So if you're doing a photo shoot, let's say, and, uh, and you're using a couple different settings, but these are the only settings you're going to use, you can bounce back between between up to three preset settings, which is really nice. Um, and we're going to go into some more in-depth settings that you can use with the custom and your manual settings um, when we're going over the menu section. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start right here at the very, very first menu option here. And we're just going to kind of run down the list. So the first one that we have here is quality. So you can go in and set up how you want to do it. You can do the raw. Um, if you notice, to do the bottom part, you're going to use the wheel, the JPEG part. To use the top part, you will use your dial up top. So if I want to shoot it raw at 9 megapixels and uh, 3,861 by 2574, I could do that. As well, if I do the bottom one, I can set that up. So I just shoot just raw, and, uh, and that's it. If you just want to go back, you're going to hit the menu button. You can turn your beep on or off. I have that off. Shoot with the card on. Sure. Uh, review time. I've set to two seconds. If I need longer, I could go in. I could set it to, let's say, four seconds. And then this is just a showing you the information of what lens and everything you have attached to your camera first. So if some crazy reason you have a lens attached to your camera and you don't know anything about it, just go into this information right here and we'll tell you a little bit about it. So we'll go back to menu. We'll go over to the second one. We'll go scroll to the top here. So this is your composition. Uh, you can. This is what you would do to set up if you want to do like an HDR shot. You would use the dial, click set, and then it would take three separate shots at different composures. So we'll bring it back in. Set. Uh, you have your white balance. Now, white balance is pretty cool. Um, one thing that you can do with the 5D Mark II that you cannot do with the T2i and the T3i is you can actually custom set your Calvin temperature. 
Now you can custom set your Calvin temperature with Magic Lantern, but without Magic Lantern, you do not have that option on the T2i and T3i, I believe even the T4i. So if you wanted to preset your Calvin temperature, you can just go in there and then use your dial and then I can preset what I want my Calvin temperature to be. And it goes all the way up to, let's see here, uh, 10,000. So uh, most times you want 54 to 56. So I'm gonna set it back to 54 for now. And now I've set that. You can also do a custom white balance. So this is where, in an instance, I would take a shot. Okay, so I just took a shot of the light. It's pure, it's pure white, so that's gonna give me, so for this room, um, and then what I could do is go into here after I take that shot, custom white balance. That's the shot I just took, and we'll set it to that. Yes, and now my custom white balance is set if I'm shooting if I'm going to be shooting in that, in that same surroundings. Uh, you have your white balance, so you have the option to go in and, and add in your own custom tones, green, blue, red. Uh, so that's a little more in-depth. Uh, I don't even use this very often. I'm sure certain photographers, people that, that shoot photography on a daily basis um, and edit and stuff like that, that literally live off their photography, um, use this a lot more than I would. So, but you do have the option to go in and, and kind of preset where you want to set your white balance at, um, depending on color tones. Uh, you have your color space. I have it set to uh, Adobe RGB. Some people like the sRGB. Uh, picture styles. You have your picture styles, of course. This is also where you would load in Cine styles if you have Cine styles. And then you have your dust delete data, and that's just another form of sensor cleaning, um, and it, it helps. Uh, delete delete dust um, if you guys are interested in me doing kind of a it's probably about two to five minute tutorial on how to use this a little more uh, appropriately just leave a comment if I get a people that are sitting in it, I'll take the time and actually show you guys how to use dust delete that it's pretty simple um, you will need a lens that that uh, zooms out or is uh, zoomed out to further than 50 millimeters to be able to do it all right let's move on here so you can protect your images, rotate your images, erase images, print order, transfer order. Um, all of these things are uh, pretty self-explanatory. So uh, highlight alert, uh, AF point, histogram, slideshow if you want to set up a slideshow, image jump. So as I was showing you guys in the first video, uh, how, how um, the, the dial jumps by 10 images at a time, you could do it in less than that, 100 images, one image at a time. Um, however you want to set that up. Your wrench, so power off, this goes off after two minutes. Uh, if I just leave this alone for two minutes straight, the, it will shut down. Uh, auto rotate, format, so if you want to format your card, that's where you want to do it. Now the reason I have all this crazy stuff up here is because I do use Magic Lantern. Menu, file numbering, I just have it set to continuous and then select folder and then you can set up folders and stuff too if you want to, and I guess put images in them as well, which is kind of nice. I do not know if you have that option with the T2i and T3i, I believe not. Uh, so we have LCD brightness. Um, I leave it in the middle for the simple fact that uh, it eats up more battery life when it is set to full blast to, if I bring it all the way up to uh, as bright as it goes, Really, at four, it's, it's more than bright enough for me, and, uh, and that's what I use, and I really like it. If I need to bring it up, I will, um, but why waste the extra battery juice when I don't need to? There have been many times that I've run out of battery when I needed to shoot, and uh, if that was full blast, I would have run out even faster or sooner. Your date and time, language, NTCS or PAL. If it's NTCS, you're going to get 60 frames per second. Oh, well, I guess they don't have 60 and 50 frames per second on the 5D Mark II. Um, but anybody that has a T2i or T3i, you're, you can change this in the same fact. And if you're trying, if you're shooting at 50 frames per second and you want to switch over to 60 frames per second, switch back to NTCS and not PAL. Sensor cleaning and then your live view functions. Uh, and you can go in and set up some of your live view stuff right here and show you some information. So if you want to uh, set up your, you can shoot at 24 frames per second. Or 30 frames per second at 1920 by 1080 and 1920 by 1080 for video functions. So we're going to go over the video functions in depth a little bit more. Uh, this is kind of all your movie functions right here, and we're going to go over that in depth and a little bit more in part three. So stay tuned for that. Oh, 
menu. All right, let's move on. Okay, so you have your battery info here. It's kind of cool. It gives you some information about your battery. Info button there. Uh, external speed light control. So you can you have controls over your speed lights. Uh, I haven't messed around with this much, but mainly this would do the control. Now this does not have a wireless setting in it like the T3i does. So you would have to have it synced over here to the left um, with a with a sync cord, or have a flash on the top controlling it from there. Camera user settings. Uh, now we went over this earlier. This is how you preset your settings for C1, C2, and C3 for your custom settings. Um, as well, you can go in and clear all the settings if you wanted to and start from new. Uh, clear settings. This also does the clearing of the settings as well. And then this is your firmware. Again, my firmware would normally be this right here, which is 2.1.2. 2 but because I have Magic Lantern on it, it has an extra dim in here where it's ML version 2.3, which is the newest version of Magic Lantern. Uh, if you guys would like to know anything about Magic Lantern, I I'll put up a link right now um, over on the left side of the screen up here, and uh, and if you guys are down here, maybe it'd be better, and uh, you guys can click on that and check out Magic Lantern if you'd like. All right, so this is one of the nice features of the 5D Mark II that uh, most uh, cameras do not have that are uh, the Rebel series, and this allows you to go in and set up each function. Now, each of these functions are set up individually with. Uh, each dial here. So if it's C1, C2, C3, uh, manual, AV, TV, if you preset these up, these functions right here, they'll all be set to each one. So if I set up all these pre functions, which we're going to go over here in a second, and I set it with the dial in the M mode, uh, it's going to remember that and it's going to keep those functions the same. If I put it in the C mode, C2, or C3 mode, again, it's going to do the same thing. So what this does is, is it, it, you can kind of set up how you want to shoot to a certain extent. So in here you have seven different options. Um, so the first one is exposure level increments. As um, far as your stops, you can change them to one third or one half, or one and one half stops or one third stops, one and one third stops. And now we hit the ISO and See how the stops are different? They're not jumping um, so much. They're not jumping by times two, in a manner of speaking. Um, you're getting half stops, which is nice. So that is what all those functions do, and we'll go back to them, because there's a, there's, there's a bunch. We're not going to go through all of them. So each individual one has, uh, has different things. These, are, these all have to do with your exposures, so you can go in and set them up how you want to. I've kind of preset all mine the way I like it. Uh, this has to do with your image. You only have four functions here. Uh, so like of my image, uh, high, high ISO speed, noise reduction, I put it on strong, try to kill out any noise that I may get. Highlight tone priority, I've gone, gone on and turned it on. You don't usually need it. You're, it's not usually gonna fix any of your highlight tones, but just in case, it helps a little bit. Uh, auto light optimizer, I've just left it to standard. Auto focus, um, you have eight functions here. Um, so you can go in and set up that. I've got most of them, I think, well, most of these up here enabled, a few disabled. Um, so you can go in and you can preset this, operations and others. You've got five different ones here, uh, focusing screen. And uh, honestly, some of these, I don't even know what they are. So I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Uh, but I've got them all set up how I like it. And then you can go in and clear all this and then reset them up. But remember that if you switch from manual to C1, you're going to have different exposures set up, I believe. So let me just go in here and see here. ISO expansion. We'll go in and turn it on to full stops here. And then we'll switch over to C1. And we'll see if it's still set. If you notice, C1 set to one third stops, where if you go to manual, it's set to one and one stop. So each individual dial, uh, TV, P, A, V, M, uh, C1, C2, C3, um, and probably even bulb are all going to be, each one, you're gonna have to set it up for each one of these. On top of that, with the custom functions, you can preset your ISO, aperture, shutter, uh, white balance. Um, so 
that let's go back and go over the last one here uh your battery information a live view and movie function set again we're going to go over that in part three which that will be a pretty pretty small part part three because all this actually we just run through it real quick um you have your live functions set up here uh stills plus movie or you can do stills only um grid display if you want a grid display while you're shooting you have that option silent movie silent shot uh mode one two metering timer 16 seconds autofocus mode quick mode but you can switch it to live mode or live or live view mode uh, then you have your options for what quality you're going to shoot in uh, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second or 1920 by 1080 by 24 frames per second or 640 by 480 by 30 frames uh, I highly suggest you shoot the 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second would be your best bet um, and then you have sound recording, and as you can see, it's recording audio right now, but you can go in and you can do manual sound recording if you'd like, and then this will allow you to set your dial if you would like. Uh, as well, you can do, um, you can disable sound recording altogether. Remember, if you're shooting video and you don't need sound, go on and turn it off because it will, uh, your video has a much better chance of shooting. If anybody's ever had the problem where they're shooting and the gives you that error, uh, automatic stop record error, um, turn off that sound recording if you don't need the sound and, uh, and disable that and you probably can get a, high, or you, your camera will not give you that error. Um, it still could, but it, it, the chances of it are slimmer because sound recording does take extra buffering time while you're shooting. So again, I've got Magic Lantern, which is fantastic, and uh, you guys really should click on that link. Uh, I'll put, put it back up here and check it out. So that is the 5D Mark II in a nutshell. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything. If anybody has any questions or notice something I missed, please leave a comment down below or shoot me a message. Um, I, you know, I hate missing anything. I like to be on top of what I'm teaching everyone here. So uh, part one and part two of the uh, 5D Mark II is now available. And you, uh, hopefully, if you guys haven't watched part one yet, there will be a link here at the beginning and at the end of this video for you to go back and check out part one so you can get to know the 5D Mark II as best as possible. Anyways, I'm David with Media Unlock. Check us out on Twitter at Media Unlock and Facebook at David D. Images. We'll catch you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.